Welcome, Golly Vibes family. I pray everybody is well. So on my desk today is the passing of Rich Homie Kwan, right? Um, for those who don't know who this is, this is an artist uh, in the music industry. He did songs with like um, Young Thug and a lot of different other people. Had a lot of di uh, big um, songs as far as the secular music is, is concerned. It says that Rich Homie Kwan's memorial service held after his passing on September 5th from potential drug overdose. DC Young Fly says that a speech that has sparked conversation saying his thoughts on God's purpose, being on borrowed time, and his interpretation of obedience. So DC Young Fly, I believe that's his name, DC Young Fly, uh, spoke at Rich Homie Kwan's funeral and started talking about God's purpose. Right now, we know if you, you know, don't know who DC Young Fly is, he's a comedian. Uh, he was on, he's been on Wild and Out. Uh, his partner actually just passed away from having a mommy makeover, right? She went into surgery. Her life got taken um, while she was in surgery. She passed. And uh, now he has three children, I believe, he's raising on his own. Uh, he also spoke about the Lord then. Now, here's what I want to say. You know, actually, let's watch the video first because I haven't even watched it. I watched like a clip of it, but haven't really even watched it. So let's check it out real quick before I even go into talking about the Lord and DC Young Fly. First, I want to say God is the greatest. All right. And when I talk, I talk with passion. So I want y'all to bear with me. Listen closely. Mother, mama, I call you mama. Uh, we've been introduced since 2003, big bro, sir, you know, he's real family. Corey, what's going on? Uh, <laughs> Y'all gave us an icon. Y'all gave us a legend. You know, we all on borrowed time. So the things that he accomplished while he was here, we want to let y'all know that we're going to continue on his legacy. And even through the small amount of time, it made a big impact. You understand? And... I know he's the head of the household and a lot of people in here is probably questioning. Now there's two ways to ask questions. The first way to ask questions is you're asking because you're trying to learn the knowledge so you can apply it to future understandings. And the second way to ask questions is you're questioning because you want to question the reasoning for what's going on. And the second way of questioning can be disobedience. So we always have to go with the first way of how we ask questions. Not why is this happening? Not why is this happening to me? No, we have to ask God, what is the purpose? What is the lesson? How do I apply this to my future understanding? Because this is the end. He's at peace. One day we too shall do this. He's still leading. He said, I got to go to see what's going on. But as you can see, I'm still leading. You shall follow. So at the end of the day, y'all, mom, I want to let you know, because we talked yesterday. And when we talked yesterday, I was just observing. And I, uh, I want you to know that you are being obedient. The way you spoke, your energy, the way you talk, your head. Koi said it yesterday. She said, I'm going off how my mama going. <laughs> but how you moving, mom? is how we supposed to move during these times. Because all the morals and the doctrines, this is the only time that we really apply it. When we hurt Job, everybody go read the book of Job. Just read the book of Job. He took everything from Job. He kept snatching everything from Job. And Job, like every Christian that, you know, everybody like, you know, I put so much good into the world. Why so much bad coming to me? He like, you know what? I ain't really been bad to nobody. I just want to talk to him. I want to ask him why. Why he doing this to me? God looked at him and said, who are you talking to? Why not you? This is the time for you to praise my name. This is the time for you to tell the other people through the Mr. Pain. I'm the one that's giving you the strength, boo. So you want to become... So when people think you crazy, mom, you ain't crazy. You being obedient. And I'm here to tell the family, big bro, sir, it's time to be obedient. It's time to take charge. Because I know the Twilight Zone is real, but guess what? It's real. It's, this is the real. And I understand the pain. This is a familiar pain. 
And I'm here to tell you as a soldier, I'm scrapped up with you. I'm ready to fight with you. You understand? So continue to be a leader to the family. Listen, it ain't over with y'all. It ain't over with. He did what he was supposed to do. We all on borrowed time. Nobody in here know how they gonna leave. But when you leave and we meet our maker, we wanna make sure, hey, wasn't I obedient? Didn't I do the best I could? So we're going to keep his name alive, and I want to tell the family, I love y'all, and I'm here with you forever. Keep God first, everybody. Quan, I love you, big bro. You a legend. All right, so that was the first time I've, I've actually seen that video. Here's what I will say to that. Uh, DC Young Fly is saying, he's talking about being obedient to the Lord. That's what he's saying. He's like, it's time to be obedient. It's time to be obedient. It's time to take charge. God's obedience and his obedience that he's talking about are different things. Now, I I, I want to say this and make it clear. I, I, I have nothing against DC Young Fly. I have nothing against any of these individuals. In fact, I pray these people actually come into true submittance true submission to the Lord. However, he's saying that Rich Homie Kwan did what he was supposed to do. Have I I, I don't know what he means by that. I, I don't know what's been done behind closed doors and things like that. But as far as the world's concern and what we have seen and what we have taken in, from the songs to the music videos to everything that has been shown to the public. I'm not sure what DC Young Fly means by that. Naked women, drugs, talking about sex. Where was the obedience to God during all that? What is, what is DC talking about? The problem with artists, the problem with the world is when somebody's life gets taken. It's said that he passed from an overdose, an overdose as well. Let's let's read it. In the report, the responding officer says he was told by Lamar's girlfriend, Amber Williams, that she woke up and found that Lamar was not in the bedroom. After finding him asleep on the sofa, Williams told the officer she left to take her son to school. The officer writes that Williams returned home and took a nap, waking up at around 11 a.m. to check on Lamar. When she touched his body, she noticed it was cold and called 911. So he was he was gone on the couch for a second. TMZ released the 911 call on the day of Lamar's death. During the phone call, Williams said that she found Lamar's lifeless body on the couch while on the scene. He did not observe any foul play. Mr. Lamar did not appear to be alert, conscious, or breathing, the officer wrote in his report. Ms. Williams advised me that Mr. Lamar did not have any medical or underlying diseases. The officer later spoke to Lamar's brother, Andre Mumford, who told him that he had waken, woken up at around 3 a.m. and found the rapper asleep on the floor near the kitchen counter. Mr. Mumford advised me, advised me that it was very unusual because he had food in his mouth, the officer wrote. He lifted him up and put him on the sofa. He could have choked too, who knows. While multiple reports suggested that the, the father of five died from a drug overdose, the Fulton County Medical Examiner told Fox, Fox 5 they are awaiting test results before releasing the cause of death and an autopsy took place on Friday. Now, listen, Rich Homie Kwan has interviews where he's talked about why, where he's been ad addicted to drugs, taking Molly every day for like a year, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, waking up and taking Molly. He has videos of this talking about it online. Um, here's my thing, right? Because I'm not saying where he went, whether he went up, what he, whether he went down, but here's my thing. We have to stop telling people that people who left earth not serving God is with God. Because that's deception in its fullness. That's why people stay in their sin instead of repenting when people leave the earth. They have no fear of God. They have no fear of the state of being that they are in. 
They have no fear that tomorrow may be their last day and what they're doing today could affect their eternity. They have no fear of it. The enemy has lied to us and made us think that everybody who leaves earth is going to heaven. That's not Bible. You see him quoting Job. Let's quote more of the Bible. Don't just quote the verses you like, but put it all in context. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Not live your best life on earth. Not try to sleep with every woman you can. Not try to do every drug you can, known to man. And then die and think that they went to heaven. That's not how it works. And again, I'm not saying this out of anger. I'm just, I'm tired of people making it seem like everybody who leaves earth is in heaven. They're doing that out of a place of wanting peace. For everybody around. But truth be told. Everybody around needs to come into the fear of the Lord because Hallelujah. everybody around needs to come into the fear of the Lord to truly come into a place of wisdom. But when we just think this is all jolly, when somebody leaves earth, we're in deception. When you got people like D.C. and people like that saying keep God first, yet they're not keeping God first. It's a place of delusion. They're in a place where they are living their life. And thinking they're doing good because their physical works may be good because they're giving money to this person or giving money to that person. Yet their conscience is still sealed in a beastly nature. Christ is not engrafting in them. They're living out their life the way they want to live it out with their fleshly desires. That's not how the Lord wanted, wants us to be. The Lord told the apostles, go out and make disciples and baptize them. Disciples speaking of disciplined individuals to follow God, to truly have the Lord engrafted in them and get more and more closer to the father, to become more and more one with Christ, to truly step into that office and that character and function, that anoma, that authority, that dominion in the spirit to truly step into that place not to live how you want in the world that's not why we're on earth that's what the devil has made us believe the entertainment the radio the movies the shows they're all put there to kill us spiritually and keep us in this plane but the bible is literally there for us to grow spiritually and become one with god to truly be children of the lord on earth and take the mean of everything yet we don't know that because people aren't teaching that. Not only that, what's on TV and everywhere else is completely keeping us in deception. Like people saying people are in heaven. That had, that, that, that had nothing to do with the Lord. Their works on earth had nothing to do with God. We had to come out of this place where we just think that. Yo, as long as I say, Lord, forgive me, as soon as I say, as, as soon, but right before I die, I'm going to be good. I can live the way I want to live. If you don't stop and sit down, if you know of the Lord, and you're just continuously ignoring the Lord, and you think that right before you pass, you could just say, I, I forgive me, Lord. You in delusion. You can hope your heart turns that way. Doesn't mean it will. You'll hope you get into a place where you truly ask for forgiveness right before you pass. Doesn't, doesn't mean you will. Come now, brothers and sisters. Come now. Get right with the Lord now before it's too late because you think that it'll be possible for you to do it right before because you want to live your selfish desires out overcome it brothers and sisters get right with the lord now amen i pray for the family to come into peace i pray for true submission to come from dc i pray for true submission to come from, to the whole family that should be a time where people want to get their life right with god not continue in the nonsense but we pray for the best. Amen.
God bless. Shalom.